Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you to this channel. Uh, in this video, I am talking about uh, a very important uh, uh, point which is how to recognize a lay stream enterer. So, if you, disc if you uh, recollect, I have made a separate video on the various stages of awakening. Right? And one of the, the first stage of awakening is Sotapanna, which is stream entry. Right? Sotapanna. That is the first stage of awakening. So, it is said that that's the first stage which everyone, all of us who are in the Buddha's teaching should, in the Buddha's path, should aspire to reach that first stage. Because if you reach that first stage, then what is left is only seven more births at the maximum. And you will never, and the most important thing is that you will never go back into the hell, animal or ghost realms in, in, in your further lifetimes. Right? So that is a very, very big thing. Because if you go in hell, animal or ghost realms, then it is, even if you want to practice, you, you, do not, you will not be able to practice the Dhamma. Because of the intense suffering that happens in such in such dimensions, and and that that suffering continues for hundreds and thousands of years, right? So the Buddha's point was that our first target is that reaching the sotapanna, becoming a sotapanna through our practice, through our inside meditation, through following the Buddha's path of the noble eightfold path, right? Now the question arises is, and and we are all on that journey of you know, becoming a Sotapanna by all our efforts that we are putting on the path. But how to recognize uh, whether a person has reached the Sotapanna? So, so this is a very important uh, discourse that I could find. This is uh, Angarita Niyaka 5.179 Ghi Sutta, right? Uh, the number discourse is 5.179. Uh, the link to the detailed discourse is given in the description. You can also check that and read the entire discourse. Here I am just sharing my learnings from the from that particular, my reading of that discourse. So, so Buddha said to Venerable Sariputta, Sariputta was Buddha's one of the, one of the, you know, topmost disciples of Buddha, Sariputta. So Buddha said, you know, you should know this Sariputta about those white clothed lay people whose action. So this is basically intended for lay people as like, for example, so it's not that Buddha's teaching is only for the, you know, people who are monks, Buddha's teaching is for everyone. So, Within lay people like you and me, right? People who are into jobs and everything and, you know, amongst those lay people, who are those who, who have reached the Sotapanna? So Buddha says, whose actions are restrained in the five precepts and who get four blissful meditations in the present life, belonging to a higher mind, when they want, without trouble or difficulty. They may, if they wish, declare of themselves, I have finished with rebirth in hell, the animal realm and the ghost realm. I have finished with all places of loss, bad places, the underworld. I am a stream enterer. I am not liable to be born, reborn in the underworld and am bound for awakening. Right. So this is very important. Buddha says, person, a lay person who is restrained in the five precepts. So very, very important. Five precepts. For a lay people like you and me, we are not required to observe a lot of things, you know. Uh, we are just required to observe the five precepts. What are the five precepts? No, no killing, no stealing, no lying, no sexual misconduct, no drinking. These five precepts, I have made a detailed video on the five precepts. You can also check that. So, person who is, do, uh, five precepts, who is following five precepts and who gets four blissful meditations. So, I will come to the four blissful meditations. What are those? They, if they want, they can declare themselves that I am a stream enterer. I do not, I will not ever again be born in hell, animal or ghost realm or any places of loss, bad places or underworld. See friends, there are lot of dimensions. This is not earth, this is not the only dimension. There are lot of many, many dimensions that are there. I have been a past life regression therapist uh, uh, also. So I have, you know, found people being going to many, many places of dimensions suited to their karma and suited to extinguishing their karma. So that's a, again a different topic. I'll make a de detailed video on the realms of existence, which is like 31 planes of existence in the Buddhist uh, uh, teaching, right? So there are various realms of existence, but mostly it is like the lower realm, which is hell, animal, and ghost realm. Then it's the human realm. And then there are realm of the devas, right? Now, so Buddha says, I am... Such a person may say that I am a stream enterer, I am not liable to be reborn 
that's buddha is clearly this is buddha's words that I, that person will not be reborn in the underworld and i am bound for awakening bound for awakening means once you become a sutapanna stream enterer from there you you go towards the path of awakening right and in the other sutra, sutras i came across this thing that at the max seven births one can take so i'll cover that in a, another video about uh, the stream enter the remaining sutras i will cover in that video so it's like at the max you will have only some seven lifetimes seven births where you will keep on you know working for your enlightenment and for your liberation and will finally be free from the uh, cycle of the birth and death so here again in that sutra in this sutra buddha says uh, what are the five precepts in which the actions should be restrained it's when a noble disciple disciple doesn't kill living creatures doesn't steal doesn't commit sexual misconduct doesn't lie or doesn't use alcoholic drinks that cause negligence these are the five precepts in which their actions are restrained so is this points to the observing of the five precepts so every buddhist has to observe these five precepts right if we are on the path then what are the four blissful meditations in the present life belonging to the higher mind that they get when they want without trouble or difficulty so here buddha tells the four meditations so these are not meditations as such these are i will say realizations that one has right the first is it's when a noble disciple has experiential confidence in the buddha the blessed one is perfected fully awakened buddha accomplished in knowledge and conduct holy knower of the world supreme guide for those who wish to train teacher of gods and the humans awakened and blessed this is the first blissful meditation in the present life being longing to the higher mind which they achieve in order to purify the unpurified mind and cleanse the unclean mind so basically buddha here talks about that person having an experiential confidence experiential confidence is not that confidence that he just the no he just knows but he doesn't believe in that doesn't have faith or someone has told him about this no he has in fact experienced this confidence in the buddha to be an awakened one to be a liberator of souls so that is number one if if you have this confidence ex- on an experiential level that yes buddha is is the supreme one the awakened one and he will liberate me he will be like a teacher who will guide me to the path of liberation then that is like first check mark second noble co- disciple second blissful meditation is noble disciple has experiential confidence in the teaching what confidence the teaching is well explained by the buddha apparent in the present life immediately effective that means the teaching is not some you know hi fi thing it is immediately effective to our life inviting inspection that means you want to go in that teaching relevant relevant that means it's not some uh, you know hi fi flowing stuff it's relevant to your life and so that sensible people can know it for themselves this is the second blissful meditation the conf- experiential confidence in the teaching the dhamma so the sutras that we are reading the expression confidence in that teaching third the noble disciple has experiential confidence in the sangha right now what experiential confidence the sangha of the buddha's disciples is practicing the way that's good direct systematic and proper it consists of the four pairs the eight individuals this is the sangha of buddha's disciples that is worthy of offering dedicated to the gods worthy of hospitality worthy of religious donation worthy of greeting with joint palms and is the supreme field of merit for the world this is the third blissful meditation that means being in that company of a sangha where everyone practices together which is good direct systematic and proper and the sangha is worthy of the offerings dedicated to the gods worthy worthy of the hospital hospitality and everything and that's the third blissful confidence fourth is a noble disciple disciples ethical conduct is loved by the noble ones unbroken impeccable spotless and unmarred liberating praised by sensible people not mistaken and leading to immersion immersion is concentration this is the fourth blissful meditation belonging to the higher mind so so these are the four so one is the first is the restraint in the uh, restraint in the five precepts we have observing the five precepts then the four experiential confidences sorry four experiential confidences 
in the buddha in the teaching in the sangha and having a, a, a conduct which is loved by the noble ones and which is a conduct loved by the people uh, alike then there is a verse that is there i i would want to read this this some uh, verses buddha says seeing the peril in the hells you should shun, shun bad deeds taking up the teaching of the noble ones an astute person should shun them you shouldn't harm living being so long as strength is found nor should you knowingly speak falsehood falsehood or take so buddha is talking about the individual precepts nor you should take what is not given content with your own partners that means no sexual misconduct you should stay away from the partners of others a man shouldn't drink liquor or wine as they confuse the mind they intoxicate you should recollect the buddha bring the buddha so basically recollect the buddha what my understanding is bring the buddha's qualities in your mind of awareness of compassion and reflect on the teaching that means study the teaching and reflect on the teaching you should develop a harmless mind of welfare that means a mind which is harmless and which is dedicated to welfare compassionate mind which leads to the realms of gods when suitable gifts to give are available to someone who seeks and needs merit a religious donation is abundant if first given to the peaceful ones so buddha is talking here about the importance of giving buddha had placed a lot of importance on giving the generosity i have made three part videos on three part series of video on buddha's teachings on giving so give and most important giving is towards the the noble ones people who are uh, sanghas towards the people who are dependent on the arms i will tell of the peaceful ones sariputta listen to me cows may be black or white red or tawny molted or uniform or pigeon colored but when one is born among them when one one is born among them the bull is that steamed a behemoth behemoth powerful well paced they yoke the load just to him regardless of his color so it is for humans wherever they may be born amongst aristocrats brahmin passengers uh, uh, sorry peasants menials or outcasts and scavengers but one man is born amongst them team true to their vows firm in principle accomplished in ethical conduct truthful conscientious they have given up birth and death and have completed the spiritual journey with burden put down detached they have completed the task and are free from defilements right gone beyond all things they are extinguished by not grasping in that flawless field a religious donation is abundant so basically buddha is saying that amongst those people who are ordinary people if there is someone who is who has given up all the defilements and whom the ordinary people can yoke themselves right basically the buddha right P- persons who is like saintly awakened ones or near awake awakened ones any donation to them will be very fruitful fools who don't understand stupid unlearned give their gifts to those outside and don't attend so so buddha is saying fools people who are not stupid people they give the giving to uh, you know others others aside but they do not give to learned ones noble ones peaceful ones but those who do attend the peaceful ones wise esteemed as sages whose faith is in the holy one has roots planted deep that means those who donate to people who are very strong in their faith of the buddha they so those who do, such people who donate they go to the realms of the gods or are born here in a good family gradually those astute ones reach extinguishment means they are free from all the defilements and they achieve nibbana right so this is basically the uh, the, the the sutta on recognizing a lay stream winner see what my understanding here is from this particular sutta is first importance very very important of understanding the five precepts no killing no stealing no lying no sexual misconduct and no drinking these five precepts and their meanings should be very very clear to us as buddha's students number one second is building developing the confidence in the buddha in the teaching so how to develop confidence in the buddha by by studying his life so there is one book that i always recommend old path white clouds right that's a book that we can read to study there are many other books second develop confidence in the teaching how to develop first we have to study so try targeting like one sutta a day start reading reflecting on that right third sangha so how to develop confidence be part of a sangha be part of a sangha and and see start take some small step 
towards joining us. I have a Buddha teachings online sangha which uh, is there. You can inquire about it. I will add you to the WhatsApp group. We have a WhatsApp group and we meet every week. And the timings can change with time, uh, maybe later on. Uh, right? So, join a sangha, be in a company of the spiritual people, right, who are following the Buddha's path and make or conduct so noble that people, uh, people appreciate, other people, noble ones appreciate our conduct. So, becoming kind and gentle in our speech and following basically the noble eightfold path. Right? So that all things we have to do, I know the task is not easy, but we have to slow by slow, every day builds upon every day. So the compounding effect happens. So but so it's like someone who is going this direction, uh, which is wrong direction, and we are going in the right direction. The direction is first important thing. Then the speed definitely we can build up with time. Right? As we are part of the Sangha, as we come together every week and we discuss our progress, then the speed can be fastened. But first we have to come in the teachings, come on the path. So I hope this video was useful. Do share your thoughts and reflections and feedback uh, on this video. Uh, I'll meet you next time. Uh, till then, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.